Isaac Newton, a name that reverberates through the halls of scientific history like a resounding thunderclap. Born in Woolsthorpe, England, this extraordinary polymath was destined to reshape the very fabric of our understanding of the universe. With his piercing intellect and insatiable curiosity, Newton embarked on a relentless pursuit of knowledge, unraveling the secrets of the natural world and leaving an indelible mark on the course of human progress. Newton's greatest breakthrough came in the form of his groundbreaking work on universal gravitation. With a single stroke of genius, he unveiled the force that governs the motion of celestial bodies and binds them together in a cosmic dance. The publication of his magnum opus, Philosophe Naturalis Principa Mathematica, shook the foundations of scientific thought, forever altering our perception of the universe and establishing Newton as one of history's preeminent scientific minds. Amidst the brilliance and intellectual prowess, Isaac Newton was not without his quirks and idiosyncrasies. His reclusive nature and solitary demeanor often found him lost in contemplation, immersing himself in a realm of thought that few could fathom. It was within the confines of this introspection that he peeled back the layers of reality, unraveling the mysteries that lay hidden beneath the surface. And today, here on History in Minutes, we'll be opening doors filled with secrets buried deep by the renowned inventor, scientist, alchemist, and mathematician who wanted to answer every single question he had in his mind. Most scientists we know today were most likely taught to us in schools. For back then, these promising minds weren't recognized by society for their contributions, not until they were already six feet under. Take Mary Curie, for example. But Isaac Newton was far different. He may be hated today for being bored and inventing calculus, making every student's brain ache, but the man was well-loved in his time. In a book written by Michael H. Hart entitled The 100, a ranking of the most influential persons of history, Newton up Jesus with him sitting on the top two spot and the latter on three. But how did he become so influential? Similar to Muhammad, he was born after his father's passing. During his childhood, he displayed notable mechanical skills and exhibited great dexterity with his hands. Despite being intelligent, he lacked focus in school and didn't attract much attention. As a teenager, his mother withdrew him from school, hoping that he would excel as a farmer. Thankfully, she was convinced that his true talents lie elsewhere, and at the age of 18, he enrolled in Cambridge University. There, he quickly assimilated the existing knowledge of science and mathematics, and soon embarked on his own original research. Between the ages of 21 and 27, he established the groundwork for scientific theories that would later revolutionize the world. By the age of 24, Newton had laid the foundation of calculus, uncovered the intricate and diverse nature of light, and embarked on his work that would eventually develop into the universal theory of gravity. While most people his age were still grappling with mundane tasks like operating a washing machine, Isaac Newton had profoundly transformed humanity's comprehension of existence, the cosmos, and everything in between. If he had achieved just one of these groundbreaking discoveries in his career, he would have secured a place in history as one of the most significant scientists of his time. However, the fact that he accomplished all three, along with numerous other achievements, solidifies Newton's status as arguably the most important scientist across all eras. This perception of Newton persisted for a remarkable 200 years following his demise. However, on July 18, 1936, the world caught a glimpse of an entirely different facet of this renowned scientist. On that day, a man named Gerard Vernon Wallop, amusingly nicknamed the Ninth Earl of Portsmouth, put up for auction a substantial metallic chest filled with an assortment of items. The contents of this trunk consisted of thousands of handwritten notes penned by Newton himself. These manuscripts, encompassing a staggering 10 million words, had never been seen before and encapsulated the entirety of Newton's life work. Surprisingly, only a handful of individuals were aware of their existence prior to this auction. Newton passed away without leaving a will, and his written legacy eventually fell into the hands of his relatives. After reviewing the contents, they determined that it would be best for everyone if these manuscripts were kept hidden. Therefore, it came as a surprise when the 9th Earl of Portsmouth decided to deviate from the family tradition spanning two centuries and offer Newton's papers for public auction. One might assume that 10 million words penned by the greatest scientist in history would be considered invaluable. 
However, the auction strangely failed to generate significant interest. Due to poor advertising by Silverbees, Newton's life work was sold in fragments to multiple collectors, generating a mere sum of 9,000 pounds. Among the buyers was renowned economist John Maynard Keynes, who arrived late after hearing about the minimally promoted auction at the last minute. Consequently, he managed to acquire only about 10 of the papers. However, the contents of those pages were so extraordinary that Keynes spent his final decade of his life attempting to locate the remaining pieces. Despite Newton's esteemed reputation as one of history's greatest scientists and mathematicians, the subject of science and mathematics accounted for less than one-third of his writings. In other words, his involvement in calculus invention and the discovery of laws of gravity was essentially a secondary hobby he engaged in when he wasn't focusing on his true interests, namely religion and alchemy. Of the two, his religious pursuits would have been more controversial in Newton's time. His approximate 5 million words dedicated to religion revealed viewpoints that the Christian church would have deemed heretical. Newton was a covert anti-Trinitarian, rejecting the notion of God consisting of three equal parts in the Holy Trinity. According to Newton, Jesus Christ was merely immortal, and worshipping him equated to idolatry. In 17th century England, such a viewpoint was highly dangerous, as people had been executed for far less. Despite his radical religious ideas, Newton was deeply spiritual and a devout Christian. He also held an egotistical belief that he had been chosen by God himself to uncover ancient wisdom concealed within the Bible. For years, he fixated on deciphering the legendary Bible code, a hidden cipher that would unveil profound knowledge about the nature of the universe. In a manuscript dating back to 1704, Newton utilized clues from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament to scientifically calculate the timing of the apocalypse. Although he could not pinpoint the exact date, he predicted that it would occur before 2060. While Newton's religious views may have been heretical, his fascination with alchemy was considered illegal. Alchemy, an outdated branch of natural philosophy, involved attempts to transform base metals into gold, seek a universal panacea, or create the elusive elixir of life, which is basically like black coffee that makes you stay awake forever. The concept of alchemy can be likened to a primitive form of chemistry, mixed with elements of sorcery and a significant dose of delusion. Sir Isaac Newton, however, had a strong fascination with it. Among the papers auctioned in 1936 was a detailed guide on creating something called Sophic Mercury, which was believed in Newton's time to be a precursor to the Philosopher's Stone, a legendary substance associated with eternal life. Newton dedicated 30 years of his life to conducting numerous alchemical experiments, although he never succeeded in transmitting lead into gold. Nonetheless, his obsession with alchemy may have had unexpected and profound effects on his life and legacy, but more on that shortly. If you're still wondering why alchemy was illegal during Newton's time, let me explain. If someone were to discover how to transform base metals into gold, they would hold the power to single-handedly disrupt the entire English economy. Although it was uncertain whether transmutation was actually possible, King Henry IV took precautions in 1404 by making certain aspects of alchemy punishable by capital punishment. While Newton's more eccentric studies remained largely unknown to the outside world until the 1936 auction, he already had a reputation for being somewhat peculiar even in his own time. As a child, he was introverted, and as an adult, he became reclusive with very few friends. At the age of 19, he confessed all his sins in a letter addressed to God. While most of these confessions were trivial, such as squirting water on a Sunday, some revealed a darker side. Among his 57 sins, Newton admitted to inflicting bodily harm to his sister, desiring harm upon various individuals, and even threatening to burn down his parents' house with them inside. Newton also had a famously tumultuous relationship with many fellow scientists. One of his most notable disputes was with German polymath Gottfried Leibniz, whom Newton accused of plagiarizing his development of calculus. The bitter feud lasted for years and became quite acrimonious, leading to the prestigious Royal Society to intervene. In 1718, they published a comprehensive report that ruled in Newton's favor. Interestingly, Newton happened to be the president of the Royal Society at the time and wrote the scathing report himself without seeking Leibniz's perspective. It is worth noting that most modern scholars now believe Newton and Leibniz independently developed calculus, rendering the feud rather unnecessary. Despite teaching at Cambridge University for approximately 30 years, Newton showed little interest in simplifying his knowledge for the benefit of his students. 
His lectures were famously difficult to comprehend, resulting in most of his students not attending. However, according to legend, Newton delivered his lectures regardless of whether there was an audience present or not. As he grew older, Newton's eccentric behavior became more pronounced, culminating in a severe nervous breakdown in 1692. For 18 months, he experienced insomnia, mental confusion, tremors, digestive problems, memory loss, and paranoid delusions. Scholars today speculate that Newton may have suffered from various conditions such as bipolar disorder, depression, Asperger's syndrome, and schizophrenia. It is also possible that his secret research contributed to his psychological state, as symptoms such as insomnia and digestive issues are associated with mercury poisoning. Mercury was commonly used by alchemists, and Newton would have employed it in his experiments. In fact, he even tasted various substances, including mercury, arsenic, and lead during his investigations. Supporting the hypothesis of heavy metal poisoning, Newton's hair, when examined after his passing at the age of 84, contained exceptionally high levels of mercury. In his mid-50s, Newton was appointed Warden of the Royal Mint, a role primarily symbolic in nature. However, Newton took the position seriously and implemented extensive changes to combat corruption, inefficiency, and counterfeiting, which was prevalent in England at the time. He vigorously pursued the persecution of suspected counterfeiters and was rumored to have visited disreputable pubs in London incognito to gather evidence on coin-related criminals. Newton's efforts resulted in numerous successful convictions, and many of those brought to justice faced severe punishment, including drawing, quartering, and disembowelment. Newton dedicated almost 30 years of diligent work to a position that was not intended to be a full-time occupation, only retiring when he passed away in the spring of 1727. History remembers Newton as a brilliant scientist whose insights propelled humanity into a new era of understanding. While this is undoubtedly true, Newton, like any other person, had his flaws and faced personal struggles. He made mistakes and battled his own demons. Perhaps his idiosyncrasies were part of what fueled his inability to change the world. This ends today's video. If you learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe for more contents worth your every minute.